right, so we are underneath the car. We went ahead and disconnected our unsafe radiator hose. This is what we made the first pass on. And uh, this is one thing that needed to come off uh, the car. So this is just an advanced auto parts radiator hose if you're new from, to the channel. Uh, we made this in a previous video, temporary to get it to the track. Uh, the problem is, is that my AN fitting is here and it needs to go across at a, um, across and then a 90 straight up. So uh, the distance from there to where the 90 forms is too short for two, a, two of these dash 20 AN fittings to work. So I ended up having to use this line to, you know, just make it work and get this car running because that's what everybody on the channel wanted to see. So uh, we're trying to make some fixes now. It is Friday night and I wasn't gonna come down here, but I decided that I would come on down here and mess with this thing a little bit. Um, so I have ordered off of eBay a used uh, Dash 20 line. This thing actually doesn't have a ton of flex, but it does have some um, flex on it. So it's a Starlight hose, um, uh, Race Parts Inc. it looks like. Um, and it looks like from what the listing said and the measurements that I did the other day, it looked like that it was going to possibly work coming off of here. But as you can see now, my measurements or their measurements were completely wrong. So looks like we're right back to square one. Oh man, not not good. Not what I wanted to see. So the measurements were supposed to be from here to the center of here. I think it was showing nine inches, which is what the ad showed from here to here. Uh, or the ad just showed here as nine inches. Maybe he was going from here to the center of that. I'm not 100% sure, but either way, uh, by the time you screw that in, it's pretty obvious that that's not gonna work. So we are right back in a pickle. Again, so I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I guess I'm going to get back on eBay and look again. Or maybe just go ahead and cut this one up and make a line. Um, as you can see, when we come apart with the Dash 20, it pretty much puts it like right into that fitting, man. So it's like if we would just extend this out, it's, it's just about... Man, if I, if I could extend this center... And then weld this piece to that piece right there. That piece would be up there. That would about get it. It's just the center needs to be longer. Man, dude. Screw my freaking life. Um, let me see what I can do. Let me see what I can figure out. Because uh, we got to make this work. And this thing is complicated just because of, like I said, the locations. All right, it's Sunday. I'm going to try to get a couple things done. Um... It's like a bunch of little nagging stuff that needs to be done, the little stuff. So like, we're still brainstorming on this exhaust down here. I'm trying to get the exhaust, waiting for a text back from a buddy who might have some pipe in need. Trying to get it where it doesn't blow underneath the car because right now the way it dumps down into the ground, it's just blowing dust and everything all up, like coating everything underneath the bottom of the car with dirt and dust. And that's not good for heim joints and stuff that slide and everything like that. So the dumps work great at tracks that are all concrete or asphalt. When you get to places like Harold's or other places that you're gonna be pitting in the dirt or the grass, um, it sucks. So we've got to blow this exhaust straight out from underneath the car sideways just to help prevent the bottom of the car getting so covered in freaking um, uh, grime like buildup because that's that's definitely never a good thing on a race car. Um, we're gonna try to work on the radiator hose, that lower radiator hose I ordered, um, the fitting that I think I need, but we're gonna go ahead and try to make rest of it today i think um and like with the exhaust i really just want to come in here take the seats out of this thing center console this thing and cut the whole floor out of this thing and uh do a little bit to the bottom of the cage lift the floors up with brand new pans uh do a brand new trans tunnel like that's the way my brain is working like i want to cut this thing apart and um change more stuff up so that i can put the exhaust exactly how i want it and i have all the room in the world but let me see what I can get done on this uh, radiator hose. We have to obviously get this fixed before next weekend. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's where we're at. Let's get at it. All right, so we're taking apart our uh, normal parts store radiator hose that we had AM fittings on. And just kind of figured I'd go ahead and show everybody. This is what it did. So 
I mean, I, I mean, you can't argue about that. That that thing was clamped in there. Okay, it is not coming out. Now it did not get the threads. It's not cut anywhere. Um. Yeah, I mean it's. You can feel the indention on the inside. Where it, I mean, it had it 100% locked. That's not a cut. That's just, um, it's, I don't know. It's where it hit something, but it's not cut. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not doing it just because the industry says it's unsafe. I feel like it's perfectly fine. Um, you're going to have to decide to do that at your own risk. I'm not going to do it. I don't want to be the cause of killing myself or killing somebody. So we're going to go with the traditional other stuff. Yeah, I understand the reasonings behind not using this stuff. It's not really designed, um, you know, for that clamping force. But from looking at it and expecting it, inspecting it for myself, I just feel like it'd be perfectly fine. Let me see here. I think I got a small piece over here. Yeah, we'll use this piece since it's already got an end braided onto it. Um, this is the junk we're using. So instead of using the OEM radiator hose, we're going back to the Amazon, Amazon junk. Um, the difference with this kind of line is it has that still reinforced braiding, but this is what it does to that line when you remove these fittings. So when you remove these fittings off of the radiator hose, this is what it looks like. Um, this radiator hose is nice and soft and able to pinch and grab extremely well. Um, and just lock it in there. This is what it does to the hose when you remove the fittings off the Amazon hose. Um, it took some of the, let's see here, the coating, you can see right here, how this is like weaved over top of the steel braid, okay? And then you have this um, fabric stuff over top of all that. So on this side, it actually has took it all the way off to the wire, okay? I don't know. I mean, people use this stuff all the time. Those Amazon kits, I know they're not great, but this is for a radiator. It's not for oil or fuel. Um, people use them all the time and are perfectly okay with them. But if I use this, people are not going to be okay with it. If it was up to me, I'd be using this. But we're going to do what I think is right in this situation. And this is what is intended. This line is intended for these fittings. This hose is not intended for these fittings. So we're going to utilize the product together as it was intended from the manufacturer. So let's put one of these ends back on here and get our mock-up done. All right, so I have worked on this all day long, uh, weighed all my options, including changing this exhaust to aluminum, squishing 4-inch, buying oval 4-inch, all kinds of stuff. And I think at the end of the day, this is what it needs to, what needs to end up happening um, I think the exhaust ends up needing to be like this. We're using our tip just as a mock-up. Um, we can't get it up into here just because that's not how the headers were built. They come down back there, as you can see right there. So they are back there behind the collectors right there. Okay, and then there's where the V-band's at. And the O2 sensor's about right here in the center on the other side. So with this pipe right here, uh, you can see our V-band's right here. We have enough room to go back in 90 in, um, a really tight 90. If we shorten these collectors, then we have plenty of room. Um, but I didn't want to do this because I figured that that would make it hang down too low. And then the more I got underneath here, and the more I've looked at it, if you look at that side over there, okay, pretty much bottom of the tra uh, transmission pan, it hangs down low. Now our skis up there, they hang down pretty much the same distance um, if not touch lower than the tips. So I measured that exhaust tip over there from the ground and I measured from here to the ground. Going out under the car like this actually gains us a half an inch higher, if not an inch, because then we also have this body flange right here that we can cut to move it up even more. So dumping them out the side like this will gain us half an inch to an inch of extra ground clearance up, believe it or not. It's really crazy. Um, but the reason why is because our collectors, the top of our collectors are pretty much to the top of this floor right here. And then the tips have to be angled downwards 
to clear this factory uh, subframe connector. Now we've got these skis that go right here, bolt onto our factory subframe connector in the Mavericks. Um, and then we have this actual subframe connector right here that's booger welded in and it goes all the way back and ties into the back of the car back here to stiffen everything up. So that leaves us with this area right here where we also have lines to get this uh, exhaust out of. It would come right here and dip right here. So this is just thin um, factory, you know, channel, U channel, C channel, whatever you want to call it, uh, that's spot riveted to or welded to the floor. And I think what the answer is going to be is to get rid of this. So I think the answer is going to be to come right here, cut this straight across, get rid of this completely all the way up to here, and then cut our skis about right here and then just have them go straight up. And this will open up the floor structure where the thickness of this, we can actually move the um, exhaust up. So we'll be able to hug the floor tighter with the exhaust, kick it out at a 90 and go straight out the sides. And then we can also get rid of this flange back here um, to hug everything tight right across the bottom of the floor. My opinion, when I take this structure out right here, even though this is uh, not super strong, I think I need to now go inside the car and then I still need to tie the front frame rails in. This is the front frame rails right here. And then, like I said, it all ties in here. I think I need to go in the car with square tubing and then weld square tubing to the front frame rails, come across and then tie it back into here. Uh, Randy's Mustang is kind of done like that where there's square tubing actually on the inside of the floor. John's is also done the same way uh, to tie everything together. And I think that's what I need to do is pretty much make my, get rid of this all this factory stuff out the bottom right here and tie it together inside the actual car. I think it's gonna be our answer to dumping this exhaust out the side and not having it, you know, kick up dust underneath the car. All right, so for the rocker bar, it's looking like that this side's gonna be the most complicated side. Still not really that complicated. That side, I don't think there's too much to worry about. I haven't got there yet, but basically we're gonna tie, obviously, that bar to that bar straight through the floor. We just gotta cut out this hump section, but as you can see, this is where all the wires run up the car. And go into there so we got to cut around the wires uh, fortunately it would just be welding back here where there's like nothing we just cover up these wires and it'll be welding up there where there's some wires but again we can cover them up um, and kind of fold them up out of the way so i don't think it's gonna be that bad uh, my goal thinking right now is to go ahead and mark my floor structure and go ahead and make that cut like that um, today that way that's done get the other side apart make the same cut over there and then that way the floors are cut out, maybe go under the car, cut the floor structure out of that. And then this week, I'm gonna use a little bar. We're gonna go and hit our old uh, plate over there. So that was where the cage was originally. It went down, it hugged the dash tight, and it went under like that. It's an S&W race car's cage, and the guy that inspected it, uh, felled it pretty much over that, said that that's not uh, gonna fly. And um, he won't do it over that. No, he felled it over pictures before he actually come out. So he made me cut it out, and he made me take this bar down and go straight down. So this bar looks like, like crap uh, when I really used to have a really nice uh, cage up front that went like this, come down, it hugged the dash, and then went under. But he wanted this bar straight up and down for some reason, even though that was an S&W race car's cage, and it was supposed to be the spec. But that's why that plate's there. There's another plate under the carpet on the other side. It's because this cage was already done once and then cut apart or tacked in and then cut apart and change that. So we're gonna run our bars through there. They'll be down on the floor, not up here. Um, it'll be down there and they'll go straight through and they'll be down there, pass through the floor and it'll probably weld our floor back to uh, the bar, I'm guessing. And then up here, we'll just take some little bars and we'll come up about right here and we'll go back, you know, kind of at an angle to hit that plate and that will tie that uh, front structure back together because that plate is above the main rocker box, the whole rocker box. That's kind of right above it. So that should tie that back in. And I uh, don't think we'll have any issues doing it like that. So let me see if maybe I can get this cut made or at least marked out and cut. All right. So got all that cut out straight through there. All done. All we got to do is uh, grind the paint off of there, grind the paint off of there, create our bar, weld it in, put some tacks in the floor, seam seal the floor, uh, do that little front bar, 
fold the carpet back on easy peasy not that big of a deal i'm not going to go under the car and cut the bottom side of the car or anything like that yet because we're going to make sure that we obviously make fayetteville on sunday for testing even if we have to put the old exhaust back in um here's this side this side was pretty much more of a straight shot it wasn't easy or it was easier hopefully i have enough um i pulled my tape you know off the thickness of this so it should have perfect uh should be just about perfect to get that bar down between there uh, but i didn't want to cut the uh um the bottom side out of the car and then something happened and we just we don't make it or whatever like i mean i guess it wouldn't hurt but i'm just i'm trying to just not do uh too much that way i'm just focused right here basically what we could do is we could throw our um, rocker bar in and our down bars um, in and then we still have the old structure in the car and um, we could throw our one exhaust tip back on and then we're good to go to fate hoping happens is i'll grab this bar like monday or tuesday tomorrow or tuesday and get this thing fitted in by wednesday night hopefully have these bars back in so i can put the car back together wednesday or thursday night all the insides and then we can uh, get this thing in the trailer, maybe on Friday, get this thing to the shop, maybe Friday night. And then I can cut the bottom side out of the car up on Mike's lift bar, Mike's lift again, cut the bottom side of the car out and do the, um, uh, do the exhaust, you know, maybe it'll go faster and I'll get it all done here at the house Wednesday or Thursday, you know, at least, uh, you know, most of it. But that way um, we can do the exhaust and the cutting and all that stuff to the bottom of the car. Up on the lift, it'll be a little easier than laying down here on the ground. That's kind of my uh, my thoughts on it. So just one thing at a time, it's still making Fayetteville. This is not gonna hold us back. This should be easy peasy. Even if we just get the rocker bars in, um, you know, we should be good to go. I've got the uh, fittings figured out for the lower radiator hose. So that's, that's figured out. All it has to do is be welded. So I'm gonna carry them pieces to the shop tomorrow uh, so that whenever Mike comes in this week, he can weld them pieces up. And then once we get the uh, Dash 20 uh, straight fitting in the mail, um, I don't think it's shipped yet. So hopefully it'll ship Monday. Hopefully by the end of the week, that fitting will be here for that Dash 20. And then we can uh, put all that together. So that's the only thing that we got to worry about is that Dash 20 coming in the mail because I'm cutting up, I'm cutting up a Dash 45 um, um, hose in to make this work. So... If that dash 20 straight fitting don't come in, then we're going to have to figure out something else because uh, we got to have that. We can't go back because we're cutting up our only dash 45 that we have. So fingers crossed that that bad boy comes in, y'all. I do feel a lot better about this weekend. So I got the jitters out of me, um, you know, on that first pass. So hopefully we can work with Randy Saturday at the shop doing the burnouts and the backing up, get all of that lined out and figured out and just the nerves out of my system and then hopefully when we go to Fayetteville on Sunday we can work on just straight up making passes so I do feel really good about going testing on Sunday and um, I think it should be a lot better I kind of know what to expect now a little bit more um, and then I think uh, the last little bit of jitters the or the last little bit of unexpectedness um, will probably sort itself out on Saturday so if I could just overcome the the backing up which is just a matter of a couple of practices and the burnouts once i get that right then all you have to do is focus on is just going straight you know and, and that's just less things of being brand new and never having done any of this before if you've got 10 things you've never done before or if you have one or two obviously one or two is going to be easy so for anybody that's asking i do feel a lot better about fayetteville and hopefully we'll make quite a bit of grounds actually this sunday hopefully we'll have everything put behind us kind of, and we can focus on just making passes this Sunday and get y'all some good uh, content. Um, like, comment, subscribe, share. If you haven't already, smash that bell button, smash that bell button. And uh, these these car updates might be a little bit more far in between, uh, a little more spread out, because I'm not gonna just bore y'all with stuff. But as we make progress and can you continue to move forward, of course, I'll share everything with y'all. Thanks, y'all.